Hi, I'm the Rick at Rick Turns, and today's video is... Hi, I'm Rick Morris. This is the fourth video in my series about making this cherry bow. Uh, and the reason it's taking so long is, one, it was very, very green and I had to dry it, and two, I want to put a peg decoration in it, and I'll explain that either uh, maybe in this video, maybe in the next video. I'm not sure how far I'll get today. So the first video in this series was roughing this out from a log, uh, and it was very wet. And the second video was making a quick and dirty and cheap drying box so I could take this from wet to uh, equilibrium moisture content, which I believe it is now. Third video was about drying it, uh, the weight when it started, the weight when I finished, and the moisture content, and so forth. Fairly short video there. And this video is going to be about taking it uh, to a more finished size. Uh, of course, I left it really thick to avoid splitting. Uh, now I'm going to turn it down probably to about a half an inch, something like that. Um, and I'm going to leave it that thick at the moment because when I put the pegs in it, I usually pound them in a little bit with a hammer. It's not a huge amount of force, but uh, it's enough so that I don't want to get it all the way down to a quarter inch or less than that. Um, so it's time to take this to the lathe and get busy on it. Now first thing I'm going to do get it into round and then I'll start uh, taking the thickness down because there's a lot of thickness there to take down. Let's see how that looks. All right, that's pretty good. It'll need more work on the outside, but right now I'm not trying to get a, a finished surface here. Um, so now switch over to the inside and true it up. That looks good. Tiny amount of tearing, but uh, not any worse than what I would expect. This cherry's pretty good stuff uh, as far as tearing goes, grain tearing. So now it's really turned down around uh, again, and now I'm ready to shape it. Now, I want to check the depth before I go any further here. All right, this is my depth gauge right here. And uh, if you see the base right down on the bottom here, that gap right there is showing how far it is from the bottom of the bowl on the inside to the bottom of the bowl on the outside. That is the very end of the chuck jaws. I'm 
going to go ahead and stop now. I don't want to get this any thinner. It's uh, thin enough right now. To lay out the location of my pegs and the bowl here, I'm going to put a circle down here and then a circle out here, and that's going to be the inside and the outside points. Then I'm going to do some sort of a circular arc right through there. I'm going to do that from six different points. So the first thing I'm going to do is put in a circle here. I don't want it too close into the center. So I'm going to go right about there. And now I have my two circles. Now I've already laid out the inner circle. And now I'm going to lay out the outer circle. Put that right there. Put my pencil point there. Now what I want to do is just lay out a curve here. Let's see, something like something like that. I'm going to cut this out with a pair of scissors to use as a template for marking on the bow while it's still on the lathe. I'm going to use a 5 8 inch distance between each peg along this curve. And I'm just going to walk it off. And let's carry that around. I have set up my indexing jig here. It, it's got a pretty finely calibrated wheel here. I've just got it locked behind the chuck here. And then the pin goes in here. I've got it set to zero degrees. Now, I've got the tourist height set so that when I lay the pencil flat on it, it's going to be right in line with the diameter. So I'm set at zero degrees. And... I'm going to make a mark there. Now I'm going to pull the pin out and I'm going to go to 60 degrees. There it is. 60 degrees right here. And there I am. Right on 300. Okay, those are my six points where I'm going to be starting an arc from. Now I'm going to take my little jig here. First point's going to fall on this line. The last point's going to fall out on this line. So get that in there like that. So mark. These will be the peg marks. Alright, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three. just want to make sure. Now for the pegs uh, in the bowl, I'm going to use a 5 16th inch peg. Now in previous bowls I used anywhere from one quarter up to three quarter inches uh, in diameter for pegs. Uh, I found that I like the 5 16th inch the best. So that's what I'm going to use here. Obviously, I'm going to need a 5 16 inch drill. And that's what I have right here. And it is a Forstner drill bit. And that is the best that i found because you want a smooth entry. And a brad point or a, a standard twist drill, when it starts, the top of the hole, the opening around the edge of the hole, it might be ragged. I do want to just real quick check the wall thickness again. Uh, one, two, three. Uh, between three eighths and a half inch. If I drill a quarter inch hole, quarter inch deep hole, that'll be good. So I am going to start it right there. And I want to keep the drill shaft they are perpendicular to that particular point of the bowl. And I think it, uh, the camera is close enough so that it shows, but we've got a nice 
uh, even edge right there. There's no splintering or anything right on the edge of the hole. I think I got all the holes uh, drilled and make sure I didn't miss anything. And let me see, I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 holes in each spiral segment, and there's six segments. So that's 6 times 13 is 78. This is the type of plug cutter that I'm going to be using for this and for all my plug decorated bowls. You can see it's got four prongs on it right there. And those cut a, a really a much uh, smoother hole than what I would get from other types of plug cutters. And there are some other types. For this project, I'm going to be using the 5 16 inch holes cutter. That's because I drilled 5 16 inch holes. And uh, I'm going to be cutting them from some scrap wood that I save from everything I do. So I'm going to look, see what I've got in my box of scraps. Whenever I cut down logs and so forth, I have a bunch of scraps left over. And I cut them into narrow strips like this. This, I think, is a piece of white oak. A little on the thick side, but it will work, so I might use that. And I got maple. Good. Maple usually works out pretty well. It is a very light colored wood, and it's also fairly, fairly hard. Anyway, I'm going to use this maple right here. Here's my 5 8 inch cutter. I need to mark one side of this. And it's going to be this side right here. And I'm just going to mark it with black magic marker here. And the reason I'm doing this is so I can make absolutely sure when I try to get the peg in the hole that I get the uh, smallest end pointed down into the hole. You would think that'd be obvious, but the taper is very fine, and it is hard to look at the peg and say, oh yeah, that's it. I've got my pegs partially drilled through this piece of maple here, all blackened on the top surface, which is actually going to be the bottom of the peg. And as I said before, I'm just going to go through and break these off with a little screwdriver. So now, I'm just going to go through, break off each one of these things. Let's see, break them across the grain might work better. I'm ready to put the pegs in. I'm going to be using plain vanilla woodworker's glue. I'm going to be using a little tack hammer to push them in. I got a big pile of pegs here, uh, more than I need, but then I always make more than I need. And for each hole, dab in a little glue, try and get it uh, around the sides if I can. Then I take a little peg, now if you remember the part that I have colored is the narrow end of the peg. Put the peg in there and pound it in. I got a lot of pegging to do here, so I'm going to stop the cameras and I'll be back in a few minutes uh, to wrap it up with the pegging. All right, the pegs are in. That actually looks like a very nice uh, pattern there, kind of these spirals going out like that. Usually when I'm uh, ready to cut the pegs down, I'll, I'll use uh, either my standard bowl gouge or even better but slower is uh, a shear scrape with a scraper. And that's on the outside of a bowl. On the inside of a bowl, uh, 
I think it might be a little bit trickier and I'm going to try something different and that is to sand them down. Alright, that appears to be working fairly well. I'm going to turn off the cameras and I'll come back when I'm done because it's going to take a little while. I'm just about done now. I'm going to finish it up now. Alright, let's take a look here. Excellent. Every one of them sanded down. It's time to clean up the foot here. And then I'll start putting finish on it. I think that will do. Now I'm going to do some sanding. And as usual for my sanding, I'm just going to turn off the cameras. I'll be back in a few minutes. All sanded. What I'm going to put on my bowl here is what I always use, and that is a wiping varnish. And the wiping varnish is regular old polyurethane varnish, diluted one to one with mineral spirits. This bowl is going to get at least four coats. This is my tack cloth. I'm just getting off any dust in here that has settled on it since I started this morning. Consistency of this wiping varnish is only a little bit thicker than the water. I'm sure I got everything. This needs to dry at least six hours. All right, I'll be back in a couple of days at least uh, to show the finished product. It's about four days later or so, and this bowl has got uh, four coats of wiping varnish on it, and it looks pretty good. It's got a nice shine on it. Final step is going to take it over to my buffer and uh, buff a coat of wax on it. And my buffer here, I'm going to rough up the surface with this. A few nails poked through a piece of wood. And I've got a little bit of carnauba wax I'm going to be using. My peg bowl is done. This is cherry. And the pegs here are made out of uh, a soft maple that grows around here. The cherry there over the course of the next year or so is going to darken down quite a bit and that will make the pegs stand out even more than they are now. The pegs are only on the inside, they don't go through to the outside. So I'm pretty pleased with this project. See you next video.